Hi everyone, it's Mr. H here. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to check your answers once you've solved an equation. You can see that 2x minus 5 equals 7 gave us a result of x equals 6. But how can I know confidently that that's the right answer? I can double check my math, but you can actually be quite confident, even more so, by checking. And so the way to do that really is to sub that number into the equation. So 2 times 6 uh, minus 5 equals 7. And let's see if what we have on the left side is equal to the right side. We get 12 minus 5 equals 7. 12 minus 5 is 7. Well, 7 equals 7. We know that x is equal to 6. Unless we've made a mistake in the original solving of the equation and in the checking, which is very rare, we are confident that's correct. Now, when I check things, what I do is I actually check it by separating the two sides. And the reason for that is because we actually want to prepare you for when you're doing things like trigonometric identities, where you can't just manipulate things and bring things from one side to the other. You have to keep the two sides separately and prove that those two sides are in fact equal. So this is really the technical way to do that. I, I say it's done like this. You say the left side is equal to whatever it is. The right side of the equation is equal to whatever it is. And then we have a wall. And we're trying to prove that what's on one side of the wall is equal to what's on the other side of the wall. And so I'm going to do the same thing I did already above, but I'm just going to do it like this to show you, though, that now both sides are equal. So almost all math teachers are going to say, especially as you get smarter and smarter and do more and more math, they're going to want to see that done separately. Because if it isn't, in fact, equal, you said all the way along that it is equal. So we're checking to see the two sides are in fact equal. If they're not the same, you know you've made a mistake and you need to go back and retry doing Cray again to get the correct answer. All right, let's have a look at the second example. So x is equal to 13. The original equation was 3x minus 4 over 5. That was the left side. We build that wall to separate the left from the right side. The right side was 7. So 13. Let's see. 3 times 13 minus 4 divided by 5. 3 times 13 is 39. So 39 minus 4 divided by 5. Remember, you have to do that subtraction. Everything in the numerator has to be done before we divide by 5. It's like there's brackets there, even though they're not explicitly written. We could add them, right? But they're not necessarily having to be written there. So 39 minus 4 is 35. 35 over 5, lo and behold, that is also 7. And so the left side and the right side are equal. Therefore, I know x is equal to 13, and I can be confident I got the right answer. Let's look at the third example. All right. So for this one, we have 2 times 3x plus 4 all over 5 is the left side. And we're going to build that wall again, so that's the left side. And the right side is equal to 6 times 2x minus 1 over 3. Now, our answer wasn't a whole number, which is kind of ugly, right? But we've got a whole video series on do not fear fractions. And if you're fearing them, check that out and then come back and watch this again. But we can do this. Let's see how this goes. So 2 times 3 times 27 over 21 plus 4 all divided by 5. That's the left side, all divided by 5. And the right side is 6 times 2 times 27 over 21 minus 1 all over 3. And so um, let's go ahead and we've got to work inside the brackets first here. So 3 times 27 over 21. Well, the nice thing here is that 3 over 21 is like 1 over 7. So we can simplify that because we have a common multiple of 3 in both 3 and 21. So I'm going to write this as 2 times, this is just 1 times 27, so 27 over 7 plus 4 divided by 5. And on the other side, I'm going to have 6 times, unfortunately 2 and 21 don't cancel out, so we're going to get 2 times 27, which is 54 over 21 minus 1 all over 3. So you can see here this is going to take a little bit more work, but if we do everything properly we should still find that they give us the same number. 
So let's focus now on just the left side and solve that, and then we'll do the right side after everything's solved on the left side. So we need a common denominator to add these two numbers in the brackets. So in order to do that, I'm going to keep the 2 out front. I'm going to get 27 over 7, and then plus, this is like 4 over 1. Any whole number, it's like it's over 1. In order to get a common denominator of 7, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 7. It doesn't change the fraction. It just gives me a denominator that's the same. And then we're going to divide all that by 5. So 2, 27 over 7 is going to stay the same. Then we're going to add that to 28 over 7. And so now we can add those two fractions because they have a common denominator that's the same. And then we're going to divide everything by 5. You can see this is going to be quite long by the time we're done. We get 2 times 27 plus 28 is 55, so 55 over 7, and then we're dividing all of that by 5. We'll keep scrolling down here. We're almost there at the answer. All right, so 2 times 55 over 7, that's uh, like 2 over 1, so 2 is only being multiplied by 55, so that gives us 110 over 7, and then we're dividing by 5. And so I've written that as a division like that, because with fractions, whenever we divide, we multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so division that's like a fraction there is the same thing as a division written like that. So uh, we can go 110 over 7 times 1 over 5. Well, let's go ahead and cancel some things out here. 5 goes into 110. It goes into 110 22 times, and that's like a 1. So we get 22 over 7. All right, that was a lot of steps. But again, if you have time on a test, then you can check it to make sure it works. But we don't know it works because we haven't finished the other side yet. So let's finish that. So 6 times 54 over 21, we need a common denominator. Minus 1, well, that's 1 over 1. So we could go ahead and say 54 over 21 minus 21 over 21. Because... 1 over 1 is going to have a common denominator of 21. And so both the numerator and denominator, 1 times 21 are 21. And so now we divide by 3. And so here it's kind of nice, actually, because uh, 54 minus 21 gives us 33. 33 over 21. And then this is divided by 3. And at this point, and I could have done this at any point in time, I'm also going to recognize that 6 and 3 cancel out nicely. So this is 2 and this is 1, because 6 divided by 3 is just 2. And so we get 2 times 33 over 21. Well, 2 times 33 is 66 over 21. And so you might look at this and say, well, it's not the same thing. Well, can we simplify this at all? Well, let's see. Can I divide this by 3? Can I divide this by 3? Well, 66 divided by 3 gives me 22. 21 divided by 3 gives me 7. And lo and behold, those give us the same answers. And in fact, 27 over 21, therefore, is the correct answer for that third example. Notice that the 22 over 7 that we found to be the answer of the left side and right side with the solution has nothing to do with the solution. It doesn't end up being the same thing at all. Sometimes students think it has to be the same number. It doesn't at all. All we're trying to do is show that those two sides are equal to each other, but it has nothing to do with being equal to the actual solution. If you have more questions about fractions, check out the video on the right. For the video on the left, that's going to be all about how the Cray method works. Thanks for joining us. When, please subscribe and hit that bell for next videos that are coming out.